Monday, April 8, Christians Providentially Preserved God's mercy, grace, providence and foreknowledge are clearly revealed in the events leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem. Cestius Gaulus and the Roman armies surrounded the city. In an unexpected move, when their attack seemed imminent, they withdrew. The Jewish armies pursued them and won a great victory. With the Romans fleeing and the Jews pursuing, the Christians in Jerusalem fled to Pella in Perea, beyond the Jordan River. The promised sign, Ellen White wrote in The Great Controversy, page 30, had been given to the waiting Christians, and now an opportunity was offered for all who would to obey the Saviour's warning. Events were so overruled that neither Jews nor Romans should hinder the flight of the Christians. Read Psalm 46 verse 1 and Isaiah 41 verse 10. What do these passages tell us about God's providential care? Psalm 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. And Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is sovereign and overrules events on earth for the ultimate accomplishment of his divine purposes. Although at times God alters his original plans based on our human choices, his ultimate plan for this planet will be fulfilled. There will be times when the people of God experience hardship, persecution, imprisonment and death itself for the cause of Christ. But even in the most challenging of these times with Satan's most vicious attacks, God sustains and preserves his church. Read Hebrews 11, 35-38 and Revelation 2, verse 10. What reality do these texts reveal about our battle with the forces of evil? How do these passages harmonise with the idea of God's protection in the previous question? Is there a contradiction in the idea of God's protection and God allowing some to face painful suffering and even a martyr's death for the cause of of Christ. Hebrews 11, beginning at verse 35, women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They even went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. And Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. In vain were Satan's efforts to destroy the Church of Christ by violence, we read in the Great Controversy, page 41. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives did not cease when these faithful standard-bearers fell at their post. By defeat, they conquered. God's workmen were slain, but his work went steadily forward. End of quote. And so to finish today. What should it mean to us that the Bible writers, who certainly knew pain and suffering, could nevertheless again and again write about the reality of God's love? How can we experience that same love for ourselves? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. 
Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.